So the title to our presentation today is Visit Us on the Social Internet, which sounded cool when I wrote it like six months ago, right, Pat? Uh, uh, talk, going into a travel and tourism conference. Uh, but we're going to be talking about social media techniques, tools, and strategies as well. And I'm going to start with the first part and a lot of, uh, of rules. I always say there's no rules to this, but uh, I just want some hard and fast points for you to think about and take home with you. And then we'll get into some more of the platforms and, and such that you've probably heard before. Key point, we're going to have some fun while we're learning and sharing. If you have a question or something sounds like a load of crap, I want you to raise your hand, make a noise, whatever, get my attention, and we'll have a discussion. We've got 60 minutes. We will not, I promise you one thing, I don't make a lot of promises, I promise you, we will not get to the end of this presentation. It will be posted online along with a video, which we're recording of this right now, uh, that you can use for future reference and share with your uh, friends and associates back home. So, why do I do this? This is probably, this is, I mean, just 60 presentations now about social media for business and, and activation and, and growth and audience growth and communications and such for audiences of all sizes across the Midwest uh, over the last 18 months. I do this because I have a responsibility to. I have, I'm not here to get your business. Uh, my cards are in the back on the table. <laughs> um, it's our responsibility as the folks who I have committed to learning social media, to committed to learning these marketing tools, to help folks who don't have the time nor the resources to commit the amount of time. I spend more than two hours a day just reading and keeping up to date with this stuff because it changes so fast. How many times you see your Facebook stream, gosh darn it, Facebook, you changed it again, I'm walking away from you. And they never do, they come back. But anyway, we have a, we have a, we call this the law of Uncle Ben, where we have a responsibility, because anytime now you say the word responsibility, it ties back to Spider-Man and his Uncle Ben, um, to educate all interested parties to the true power of these platforms. Because these are very powerful and very effective platforms if used with great responsibility and care. Sign of applause, because the hands won't show up so well on the video. Uh, who has one of these books? Okay, save your receipts. Um, <laughs> this is a picture I took at the Barnes and Noble uh, last fall here in Jefferson City. Um, there's a lot of books. Here's Twitter, here's Facebook, here's web marketing, here's a Pinterest book in the middle. Uh, you know what all these books have in common? Anybody? They're already out of date when they're printed. They were out of date when they were printed. You seen them before? No. No. <laughs> it's the truth. They're all out of date uh, as soon as they're printed. That's how fast this stuff changes. You can't keep a printing press and, and, and uh, up to speed with the internet. So you've got to commit to learning these things online and by doing and, and trying and succeeding and even failing. That's how you'll learn to do these things the best. Who, and I know the answer to some of these questions, for your, your organizations, your businesses, your, the, the place where you get your paychecks, who has a YouTube account, a YouTube channel? Very good. Who has a uh, Facebook brand page that you're using every day, multiple times a day, engaging that audience? Very good, almost everybody. How about Twitter? Who's tweeting? Okay, a little less numbers. And, and does anybody have a LinkedIn effort? What are you guys doing with LinkedIn for travel and tourism? Just professional networks. Professional networks, but for, for the brand, for Pulaski County, for our Mid-America coaches, do you have a LinkedIn? What are you doing with LinkedIn now? Accumulating names and uh, making references and just trying to multiply everything. Okay, you know? okay. I mean, that's, there's people there that want to do business with entities like y'all. Um, and uh, well, we'll talk about LinkedIn towards the end if we get to that point. It'll be at the end of the presentation. So what can you use social media for? This is my dog. She's happy. She's cute. She's a quirky. And she is always great when she's got her ears up because it always reminds me you have to keep your ears on. You have to keep your ears up to be listening uh, for opportunities to engage in conversations, for listening for opportunities to promote the brand or the vacation or the hotel space or whatever it is, the fine wines of Missouri, uh, to, to talk about those things online. Uh, you keep your ears on to support uh, not just your brand but other people's brands or your community as a whole. Look for opportunities to support you look for opportunities to give thanks. We'll say this several times, the most powerful words in social media, there's two of them, thank you. 
Thank you at Capitol Plaza for hosting us here today. Thank you at Missouri Travel Council for hosting us here today, or putting this event on for us today. Relationships and sales, like we just talked about, and talking and bragging. It's okay to brag. It's okay to toot your own horn. Just don't make it every piece of content that you share out there. It should really only be about 10% of your mix. All right, here's the first rule. A like is just a click. It took me the same amount of energy to click the next slide as it did to click the little thumbs up on Facebook or touch it on my, well, my touch screen device. But a share, if you can get somebody to share your content where they take what you've written, this beautiful photograph of the lake, the uh, meeting announcement for whatever's going on that you, with your organization, all those tour buses, Mark, and our pictures in front of your tour buses, you get those people to share that where it says Mid-America right behind them in big letters. You're moving the billboards. If you can get those people to share those photos with their audience, and then everybody in that picture shares that picture or tags himself in that picture, you've reached the audience of audiences of audiences. The ripple effect. And that's how you spread your word, by having effective content that people want to share. Likes are great. Likes make you feel good. Oh, I got 100 likes on this. It takes no effort and no memory. What was the last thing you liked last night on Facebook? Who wants to volunteer? Nobody, every shake their head. I don't know. I don't know. It's okay to like things. Don't feel bad. Don't feel guilty when you do it. But look at that share button. It's half an inch further over on the column. It's now next to the smiley faces in the, in the Facebook feed. If your posts are not saying love me or learn from me, you're doing it wrong. If your content, if your picture isn't telling the story, if your words are not educating somebody about the benefits of your location, your wine, your, your, your uh, item or places they can visit in your town, you either make them love you or you educate them. And that's the content that people want to see. And create, as I said in the last presentation, create those visuals that people want to like and share and send forth and engage with. Great pictures, great photography, just like that picture of me he just took. It was good, right? Yes. A lot of promises being made this morning. Create the content and visuals people want to share. Otherwise, you're just throwing stuff up on the internet. And we have enough stuff up on the internet, don't we? St. Louis. Sorry, Dave, but go cards. <laughs> we, all, we all travel the state. We all travel the control of the country. And we take pictures. We take iconic images. There's a television show that's been advertised all over the place last week. It started this week on... Uh, called Defiance, is that right? With the St. Louis Arch. Where's my arch person? She's still in the room. Oh, see, so your arch is all over the place. What? Your arch is on every swipe, every camera graphic swipe on the MLB network. Did you know that? Yes. Your arch is everywhere. It's this iconic thing of St. Louis. Do you ever notice that if you, if you go down to the hotels and stuff, like that, that 360 place, um, with the, the ballpark view, you turn around and take pictures of the arch, how many signs there are in front of the arch, so KPMG shows up in your pictures. That's smart. But it doesn't, you don't have to have the arch. You don't have to have Bush Stadium here. <laughs> we, got, we got one, we got one. If everybody had an arch. Anyway, every community, every business, your billboards that we just talked about that have four wheels on them. Eight wheels? How many wheels? A lot. Yeah, the wheels on the bus go. All right. People pick, take pictures. 16 wheels. It's an iconic thing that, that tours and groups take pictures in front of. If you drive around Jeff City today, more likely if, there were, if you drove around here yesterday when you came into town, you saw a bunch of those buses in town. It's hard to see, not see, go see a day in Jefferson City without a Mid-America coach or one of your loyal opposition uh, with their mobile billboards rolling through town here because tourists come to Jefferson City for all of our various wonderful attractions every day. Right, Ryan? Always, all every right. day. <laughs> so 
you've got iconic images. It doesn't have to be an MLB stadium. It doesn't have to be the National Park Arch. This is a, a, a Urban's, Urban Review St. Louis posted this picture last weekend, and I caught it, and I wanted to catch the whole website view, but it's a, a view of Bush Stadium from behind. But Highway 40, this highway, the Highway 40 view, you can see the on-ramps and stuff. Uh, here's uh, that building where the flying saucer's in now, I think, uh, et cetera. It's an unconventional view of Bush Stadium. That's kind of cool. Always remember to your iconic images. You ever notice how all of the pictures of the arts that we're familiar with are taken from the Illinois side? Why is that? What's, if you took it from the Missouri side, what would be on the other side? What would that image be portrayed? Yeah, exactly. And that's why we're at the Missouri Travel Council meeting today, not the Illinois Travel Council meeting. Not every day is going to be perfect, not every view is going to be perfect, but every image somebody takes of your community, of your business, is an image that gets broadcast out there. This is what it looks like right outside this building right now. It's probably a little darker. This was yesterday. And you know, it's a, a view of the Capitol. The Capitol's there. It's a landmark. People that know the Capitol and think that's Washington, D.C. or Jefferson City. It's amazing how many people think our capital is Washington, D.C. But not every day is going to be Chamber of Commerce weather. Not every day is going to be sunshine. Not every picture is going to be from the right angle. But own them. Do a Google image search, search of the arch and see how many pictures show up. Do an equal, uh, image search of the Mid-America bus and see how many pictures show up online that you can go out and engage with those folks. Hey, thanks for using our buses. Thanks for visiting our community. Thanks for drinking our wine. Check-ins are not just for our hotel friends. You need to be engaging people and encouraging people to check in on social media at your place of business. Here's a quick story for us mid-Missourians that are in the room. Uh, we know the tale of Oscar's Diner. Oscar's Diner is a, uh, a diner. It's a diner. And it's a typical diner that attracts an audience traditionally that you would not think would be on Facebook or Twitter or doing all these things. Well, right there by their cash register, when you walked in the door, they had the little tent stand up, television and Facebook, check in here at Oscars. How successful do you think it was to the, them marketing to rooms, daily rooms full of seasoned citizens? This small little business here in Jefferson City, family-owned diner on the east side of town, had 737 likes and 2,214 check-ins. That doesn't happen in Jefferson City. This is a great place. They, they had a fire last month, and their Facebook family, their social media family, came together for them and was engaging and sharing the bad, the bad news and pledging, I'm going to be there eat waffle fries or the, the roast beef. I'm going to be there the first day you open. What can we do to help you, et cetera, et cetera. Your employees need jobs, that kind of stuff, because they built up a loyal following online. It's a great story for a small business in a town where Facebook in, you know, activation and integration is not what it is in St. Louis or Kansas City. These can happen in any place. Logo bug everything you posted online, all those great pictures we were talking about earlier. Put your logo on there so people, when they share it, in case they copy it or even they're going to have to crop your logo out. I say logo bug, do a little uh, white reverse there, just like my logo is there in the corner of that screen. Put it in your photos so when that photo travels across the world or shows up in Google search, They'll know where it came from. Own, stake your flag in your property that you're putting out there. Welcome your visitors with a tweet. If you've got the hotel, if you've got a convention coming into town, if you've got the fourth grade class from Puxico High School up in St. Louis Arch, it would take you 13 seconds to figure out what's the Twitter handle for Puxico High School. Did your third graders go to high school? <laughs> in Puxico, maybe. Anyway. Find out their Twitter handle. Welcome to the Arch. Enjoy your stay. Is there anything we can do to help you? Let us know. The same with Pulaski County. The same with any of your locations. It doesn't have to be the Arch. It doesn't have to be anything. Here's a picture I took the other night. I didn't drive, I didn't drive around town taking pictures of travel-related things in this presentation, by the way. But this one caught my eye because of what the sign says. And if you don't know what this is, it's Ladies Auxiliary of the VFW is what it is. I'm sure this caused a record to you on Highway 54. Welcome, cooties. I know the Truman didn't send out a tweet saying welcome to the, 
that welcome cooties to Jefferson City. And but you should be doing it. And you should always put in your your uh, hashtag for your geographic code, hashtag STL, hashtag JCMO, KCMO, whatever your hashtag for your geographic code is on Twitter, <laughs> include that so that audience, your community audience is following your local news on Twitter, sees that, oh my god, there's 5,000 women here with cooties in town. <laughs> there were no third grade boys in that in the Truman Hotel the other day, I'll know that. Your residents are your best salespeople. <laughs> If they're getting good, bad, or different experiences with anything related to your community or anything related to your business, where do you think they're going to go to write? Their mobile device, which they're spending all of their time with. <coughs> Upwards of 70% of all tweets are done from a mobile device. It's, over, it's getting close to 60% uh, between the ages of 18 and 44 for Facebook use is on a mobile device. People are having good, bad, and different experiences with your venture. They're going and talking about it and sharing that news with their friends. And that news travels fast. This is I did a hashtag search Missouri travel. Here's three tweets over the last three days talking about how something cool. Here's a cool cave location, a cool cave formation in southern Missouri with a picture. Uh, here's a story about how peculiar Missouri got its name. Here's a talk about Mastodon State Park uh, linking to a travel blog. So people are you know, talking about the things that you're doing business with, that you're trying to promote. Anybody do business with any of those three ventures I just named? Uh, Becky, Express, Fred. Fred. Okay. And you engage her on social? Cool. She says nice things? Okay. Seemed like a nice lady. Don't fall for shiny objects. The latest, greatest thing to come into to social media or to internet marketing or marketing as a whole isn't where your audience is. When Mashable is writing about it or social media, whatever blog is writing about these things, it's going to be a year or more before it gets here in Missouri. If you're wanting to track your in-state travelers, they're not on these flashy new things. They're not on buying. They're using Pinterest, they're using the platforms that are there and established and that they work with their daily lives and they go where their friends are. So when we talk, they said earlier the average age of a traveler in Missouri was 45 years old, a party of three, that person's on Facebook. There's no such thing as a buyer. Only hard work, good content, and a cultivated audience. You can't put up a funny, I mean, who did a Harlem Shake video? Everybody put your hands down, I'll be the only one to know who did the Harlem Shake video. Nobody, thank you. Good. What's a crazy, anybody make a crazy video when you go viral? Can you raise your hand, set your hand raise? Oh, okay. You did, what'd you do for the state? What's that? He's still here. <laughs> what kind of what was the results? Right. Right. If you're if you've got your audience trained, if they've taken the effort to like your page, and by the way. You all know that once they like your page, they're never ever going to go back to your page. You know that? 99% of all the interaction will take place in the news feed. If you're not putting up regular content at the times of day when your audience is online, they're never going to see your content. How many would, if you know the answer, don't shout it out, but somebody can take a guess or two at this. What is the average uh, impression rate for a Facebook post? Be it words, be it picture, be it video. How much of your audience, if you have a thousand people in your audience of the Facebook fan, how many of those people are going to see your posts on average? Anybody? Anybody know? Experts? 10 to 12%. 10 to 12%. 10 to 12%.
if you're thinking every wonderful three sentences in a picture that you spent a day writing, I do it too. This is the one, this is the one. You push post and you got nothing. Well, it's because you did it at 2.30 in the afternoon on Wednesday when everybody's in their post-lunch nap and they're not going to engage with it. 12, figure on 10 to 12 percent. You can, you can measure that on your Facebook post. It puts the information there for you. On your Facebook insights, it puts the information there for you. So that's kind of some the rules, some kind of things that you, some guideposts for you to use. Any questions about any of that? Yes. Your optimal posting times is different for every one of us. We've done a study. Uh, we did a study here in Mid Missouri uh, on posting times for a high uh, activity post that we did. That we had. It was my birthday, and I tracked back. Uh, of my 1,200 personal friends, we broke it down by the time of day they posted, where they were geographically, and whether it was somebody I did business with or not. And we broke down in Jefferson City, for the people I'm trying to reach, the business people that I'm personal friends with, is uh, between uh, 7.30 and 9.30 in the morning, and after 7 o'clock at night. Now, each one of us is trying to reach a different audience. Each one of us is in a different geographic location. Each one of us have, may have a thousand fans, but there are a thousand different people. There's a crossover, but there are a thousand different people. Study your insights. Study, because you can pull up the report, you know, that little bar or that EKG report in the middle of your Facebook admin panel, click that. It opens up about an eight different page uh, report that you can click on, and you can click on each of your posts and it'll show you the time that you posted it and see which ones which ones got high, great, high times of engagement and which ones didn't. And you can start to make a pattern. So you just have to study with your own audience, and experiment with your own audience. So let's look at some audiences here, speaking of. In Missouri, these numbers are active as, this more, as of this morning. There are 3,061,000 Missouri Facebook accounts total. That's more than 50% of Missouri's population. In America, there's a whole, there's 158, just about 159 million Facebook accounts. Facebook, obviously, is, I'm sure most of us know, is over a one billion uh, audience worldwide. In Twitter, we've got 376,000 and plus Missouri Twitter accounts and 40 million plus American Twitter accounts. It's much easier to get the information from the Facebook population accounts. Uh, Twitter does not have real good tools, but we've uh, taken the Pew and Edison surveys that say that 13% uh, of online in America is on Twitter, and we extrapolate those numbers against the 88% of America that is online, apply those numbers to Missouri populations, and those are the numbers, the estimated numbers that we that we arrive at. Who are these people? And this will be on the on the web uh, for you to see because it's a small print for uh, you guys in the back. But 80, 83% of 18 to 29 year olds are on Facebook. If our travelers average 44 years of age, well 72% of the 30 to 49 year olds are on Facebook. 15% of the 30 to 49 year olds are on Twitter. The difference between those two audiences is the Twitter audience are, there are apex predators if you will. I forget what movie I watched with that just had that term in it the other day. but. These are the people that take information, disseminate it, and spread it to their audiences. So if they like something, and they want to retweet it, and they want to put their little pithy comment on it, by God, I liked the, the roller coaster video. You need to check out this roller coaster video. Or I liked floating the Jack's Fork River. Can you float the Jack's Fork? It's the first river that popped in my head. OK. These people are, are making money as well. Uh, 50,000 50, to 74,000 uh, age or wage range is 68% of those people are on Facebook. 19% uh, of people that make 75,000 plus are on Twitter. So you can look at the audiences that are there. That's the national averages. You need to look at Missouri and look at your audiences. Always be looking at your audience and analyzing it. If we take this down local here to our mid-Missouri region, because I know a good chunk of the room is from mid-Missouri, 
We have 45,000 plus people on Facebook, 100, in Jefferson City, 100,000 plus in Columbia, and 20,000 plus uh, in the three major communities of the Lake of the Ozarks that uh, claim those areas as their place of residence on Facebook. That's why you may see some numbers that are higher than the population size uh, that are outside of town. Uh, extrapolating our algorithm to estimate the, t the Twitter uh, figures, 26,000 people on Twitter in mid-Missouri, 514. Th uh, I forget, I'm sorry, I forgot what that number is. And 78,000 people on LinkedIn. Uh, that's an actual number, that's not a, an estimate. If we look at Jefferson City here, and Ryan just left, so she can't. We look at this and we see that there are 42,000 people over the age of 18. We see that there are 640 engaged women. We see that there are 5,980 people who are travelers, who have said that they are travelers in Jefferson City. Uh, 5,000 people like beer and spirits. I'm one of them. I just did this search here with about 16 different word variations on the word vacation, none of them starring Chevy Chase. 9,000 people in Jefferson City are interested in vacation, have talked about vacation, have expressed interest in vacation here in Jefferson City. So it's a right audience for people, no matter where you are in the state, you want to get Jefferson City people to come down to Branson or Jefferson City people to go up to Hannibal. There's 9,000 people who like doing that kind of stuff. Day tripping was one of the category, one of the keywords in my search. So how do you reach all these people? You've got to be interesting. You've got to be interesting. You just can't throw stuff out there. I still see it, and we've all probably seen it, where the first line of somebody's Facebook post is for immediate release. Facebook and Twitter and all of this is not another fax machine to send press releases out on. This the first word of this is social, it's social media. You talk in terms of with a personality, if you type with a smile on your face, you make them love you, or you educate them to the benefits of them getting off their butt, getting in their car, and driving the day trip to your destination, and spending money in your community, or in your business. Be integrated. All your social should be driving the traffic back to your website so you can capture uh, their information calls to action to submit their email address or to fill out the contact form to request more information or to see even more interaction, interactive things like videos and more photos, etc. than just one Facebook post will show. Be local. Talk to your local audience just as much as you do your outside audience that you're trying to get in their car. So that local audience still tours in your town. That local audience still spends money in your town. And every one of you guys is trying to get people from one town, town A to come to town B, and town B's board is trying to get the other people to go both ways. Always be cross-communicating. Even, you know, share other you know, details of interests and such. There's so, many, there's so many interesting things that you have to tell these, your audiences about. You just have to start doing it, and they will appreciate it and engage it and share it. <coughs> be thinking like them, not you. I know we think that every event, I know we think that everything that we do is the greatest thing ever, but your audience might not. So you've got to put it in terms of what's in it for me. What am I going to get out of great picking days? What am I going to get out of the cruise down the Missouri River? What am I going to get out of these things? Put it in these terms and always be calling to action. Sign up here, more information here, click this link here. Call to action so they are interacting with the information that you're putting out there and getting closer and closer to revealing their name and email address, if nothing else, with you. What doesn't work is being fake or dishonest. If my friends over at the Jefferson City Chamber went outside or posted a picture of a bright, sunshiny day of the state capitol today, this morning, while we're in here, knowing that there's probably a funnel cloud above us, that would be fake or dishonest, wouldn't it? Not listening, putting something up there and 15 people uh, like or share or comment with the post and you don't reply to any of them. Facebook now has a new option on the comment stream where you can reply to an individual comment. Is everybody using that tool? Instead of replying to the, all 30 comments, you can pick out my comment asking 
whatever your hours of operation, we're open eight to five, close at six on Sunday. Don't be selling all the time. Again, your mix. 80% is things that make you love them, make them love you, or make them learn from you. This is our how we do it. 80% is that we share, we're educating. 10% is us talking about things that we're involved with in the community. And then 10% is the harm to you. That's how we engage our audience. Staying in your silos. Don't always be talking about why you should come to Puxico. Talk about the great thing, you know, the great things next door. Because the hotel's in Puxico. If they go to the town next door, they're going to stay in Puxico. Sharing too much information. The wine, you guys that were posted the uh, inebriation photos on your Facebook page, too. Yes. Well, that would be too much information, but don't do it. <laughs> not measuring, not looking at your insights, not looking at your analytics, not looking to see how these people are, are if they even are interacting with you. If you just keep doing and doing and doing and not knowing what's happening to the, your, your audience, it's not helping anybody. And crossing streams. Do not have your Facebook linked to your Twitter, linked to your other profiles. All of these audiences talk in different ways and different terms. And as we saw with the population counts here in Missouri, a fraction of the people are on Twitter and don't really get the ads and the hashtags and all that kind of stuff, and it pops up in there, and it's annoying. And they tune you out, they hide you, they unfriend you, unlike you. You're killing your audience doing things like that. So what does work? When I was a younger, somewhat wealthier, more single man, I would, I would go to the wineries, I would go to the wineries, and I would talk to the young ladies, I would try to squire the young ladies, and my opening line was always something along the lines of, what's your story? And sometimes this happened. <laughs> sometimes uh, it didn't. But I wanted to pull out the information from that. I wanted her to tell me that story about her, where she's from, where she's from school, what's her parents do, what she want to be when she grows up. This is what your audience wants to know about your venues. They want to know what your story is. And you have so many stories. Whether you've been over business six months or 60 years, you have stories. You have photographs that go back. You have reasons why you're doing business. You have a great customer story that happens almost every day, I'm sure. That's the kind of information that you can be putting out there to make them love you. Tell your stories. What's the one ad you remember from the Super Bowl? I don't even remember who won the Super Bowl. Thank a farmer. Thank a farmer. Was it the 49ers? The Ravens, see? Everybody had the same name. It was confusing to keep them all straight. Thank a farmer. This is a clip from the Thank a Farmer Dodge video with the Paul Harvey voiceover. People remembered it. People connect with it. The campaign's still going. What, five months later? I see people nodding and smiling because you're thinking about it right now. That's storytelling. That is about farmers. God love us. I'm a retired farmer. Failed farmer. <laughs> uh, which people, our city cousins, don't understand. They don't get it. I'm going to go into the agriculture soapbox here too much, but there was a story that connected with people and hit them right here in the heart, which hit them in the mind. And I don't know if it drove one Dodge truck sale or not, but I do know that it drove interaction with the uh, Future Farmers of America, which was the goodwill effort of Dodge in that campaign and continues to be in that campaign, and they're growing the audience. If anybody saw the local news this morning, there was a huge check given to the Missouri FFA, or the Columbia FFA uh, yesterday, spinning out of this campaign. Tell your stories. Think of Flaskian. Thank a bus driver. So we can get to the Facebook platforms and all this kind of stuff. There's just a couple of important slides here, but does anybody have questions? Nobody's interrupting me. Nobody's calling me out on anything. This never happens. Who's got something? All right. Facebook. And what's my time? There's no, it's like Vegas in here, no clocks. <laughs> How much? About 20 and 25. 
Very good. Thank you. Pop quiz. Have you taken this before, Capital Plaza people? Sweet spot for post length. How many characters should your Facebook post be to have the highest rate of, inter of response? You don't have to write this down. You just have it up. Anybody? Under 100 characters. That's less than a tweet. And a character is a letter, a space, a punctuation, just one of the 45 exclamation points many of us put behind our Facebook posts. Less than 100 characters. You've seen those posts where people have written so many things, they went to paragraphs, and then it stopped paragraphs, and then the link shows read more. Nobody in the history of the world has ever clicked read more. Yeah. So keep it short, put a link, put a picture, done. Sit back and wait for the comments to respond to you. And tell the additional points of, your, of what you're trying to tell in the answers to the comments or to the likes or to whatever. Best time and day to post. We've talked about this a little bit. Each one is individual. Each of us is individual. Study your audience. And you'll, the, the numbers, the data will tell you when's the best time for you to interact with your audience. The best driver of interaction is, we've already heard this today, images, images photos, and videos. Facebook says that uh, they, on the average, those two will get 100% more interaction than just text alone. Test it if you don't believe it, or if you have different results. I've got Zuckerberg's email address. I'll send you a report to him. Using a personal page as a business page. Is that a good thing, bad thing? It's the horrible thing, yes, thank you. Hell no is the correct answer to that. Don't do that. How many times a day to post? How many times a day should you be posting on your Facebook? When I say a day, I mean seven days a week. Three is a good number. Five might be a little high. Um, at least once. If you want to maintain your edge rank, you want to maintain any kind of bump in your algorithm. Uh, twice is a good number. You'll know when it's too much, when you start seeing your audience dwindling because they have, have unfriended you, unliked you, uh, have hid you. Uh, when you see your impression count start going down. Um, and if you think that you're doing it too much, you were doing it too much two posts ago. This is a, a graph here from our friends at Track Social where it shows that the photo has the highest rate of engagement. If you combine the photo and the video, you'll be through the roof. Questions. Does anybody use questions? The questions tool? Which of our wines do you like? The white grape, the red grape? I don't know what your wines are called, so I'm going broad. Yeah. Does it work? Really? Like how many, you post something like that up, how many people would, he's posting, how, what's your favorite kind of our wines? And how many people would respond to a post like that? We typically have been the percentages to spike. Really? How, how big of an audience? How many fans? We have a few hundred. A few hundred? Okay. It's used, I don't see it used frequently, times that we've tested it for ourselves and our clients, it's worked with mixed results. The question has to be something people care about or something that is directly tied to your brand. What's your favorite kind of water to float on? Wet? Dry? You can even have a fun question like that and people will respond. What doesn't work? Putting, find me on Facebook, putting the Facebook app, putting these things in your other marketing items, in your brochures, in your videos, in your website, that kind of stuff. That doesn't work. You know why? You're not the only, I always use the example, if you're not the only Jim's Tire in the world. So if Jim's Tire says, find me on Facebook, and you go and search, and Jim Tire, Jim's Tire from Manitoba comes up, and the Facebook fan just goes, oh, I like that, I'm gonna get the coupon. And now he's got Canadian coupons that, which don't convert well to US dollars, and he can't buy tires here in Jefferson City. 
Put your full address on everything that you do. Facebook.com slash rocket group. Twitter.com slash rocket group. And people will find you. Make it easy to find. And we touched on this as well earlier about bad news traveling fast. If you have your club, your customers, your neighbors, your residents who are saying good, bad, and different things about your community, about your business, about such, that bad news will travel 47,000 times faster, not an accurate number, faster than any good news that you put out there. People always want to see the car wreck, don't they? This was the Manny Teo story. Remember that from a couple months ago with the fake girlfriend stuff? I just happened upon this post by Deadspin.com on Facebook uh, 51 minutes after it had been posted. Dead, this was posted at 2 o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon. In the 2 o'clock hour on a Tuesday afternoon, a real dead time period for uh, Facebook, especially on the East Coast, 3 o'clock on the East Coast, where uh, a lot of this, their interaction is at. They've got 30,000 fans at the time. Um, in that 51 minutes, they had 242 shares, 32 comments, 85 likes. People were jumping on that at that dead time of day because it was something newsworthy. It was something that they could laugh about at the guy's expense. It was bad news, and it traveled fast. And how long did that story dominate the news cycle? A week? People still talk about it. The draft is next week. It's going to be coming up again. I think the draft's next week. Uh, so always keep your ears on, like Taffy said, keep your ears on for that bad news so you can respond to it uh, and stamp it out before it spreads. If somebody has a bad experience at your hotel, if somebody swallows the cork at the winery, I've done it. <laughs> it was a dare. Uh, that news is going to travel fast and create the perception about your community, about your winery, about your bus company to the people that, that don't know you. It'll be their first exposure. It'll be a bad story. Just like everybody's kind of got their eyebrow up about Manny Teo, they're going to have it up next week when he's in the news again for the NFL draft because they broke their story and it blew up like wildfire. And it's some personal story. It's really none of our business. But everybody talked about it. Get your followers engaged. Again, yes. Who says that? Certain companies. <laughs> you respond with the facts. You put a comment, in, in whether it's somebody attacking your company or being belligerent in your Facebook stream, you put the facts into that comment, into that posting, and you try to drive a conversation. Give me your phone number, give me your email. Uh, dude, I've just messaged you with my phone number. Please call me and we'll try to handle this off the internet. And then you respond with a post on your website and across your social channels. This is a story that might be out there. You might have heard this. Here's the real story. And even better, get your cell phone out or your flip cam out or your, your $400, $500 little video camera out and say, hey, look, we're still in business. We did not burn down last night. We did not close. Look at this. People are enjoying our product right now or our community. Tell, keep, respond to your bad news with your good news and the truth. Does anybody disagree to that? I mean, if you want the bad news to take hold, like Manny Teo did for a week, you know how, do you remember how Manny Teo responded to his bad news story? He did an interview on ESPN on Friday night at 11 o'clock Central Time, PM, thinking nobody would be out and nobody would be watching. It was, boom, it was on the internet. Everybody watched it for the next week. It took the story, gave the story more legs. Bad news travels fast. When Hurricane Sandy hit uh, last last year, you saw these fake photo, uh, Photoshop pictures being shared all over the place. People want to share this, this horrible thing that's about to happen in New York. But that was real, good lord. But here's a small business. When the small business goes out of business, people will say, you know, they put up the Facebook post for our last day is Saturday, sorry. Come and enjoy our last days. And then 500 comments will be like, oh, I loved you so much. I loved your food. I love these things. My response is always, well, did you engage with them? Did you tell your friends? Did you share it on Facebook that you liked their wine? Did you check in when you were there in their bus? Did you do what you could 
They're your Facebook friends. Don't you want your friends to enjoy the nice things that you're enjoying? Don't you know about the nice things that are available to them in any part of Missouri as they're traveling around? Share the good news, not the bad news. What motivates somebody to share on social networks, to share their products that they like, the experiences that they like? What motivates it? They want to express their tastes and preferences with your friends. I want to share, number two, 35%, I want to share a great product or experience with my friends. We're all in the experience business, right? We're all in the great experience business, right? We need to be encouraging people to interact and sharing those great experiences with them that they're having on your soil as they're having it, because they're all taking pictures with their phone anyway, right? Get them to share, encourage them to share that content and be tagging you and talking about your product and, and your service. Do the math. This is not the rhythm. A share is greater than a check-in, it's greater than a comment, it's greater than a like with an asterisk, it's greater than nothing at all. A like is the easiest thing to do, as we talked about. A share, I have to kind of get to think about what I'm going to say when I share this. Oh, looks like I'm drunk again at Open Wine Winery. Post. <laughs> ShareThenLike.com uh, goes to a blog post of ours about encouraging shares, encouraging you know, about how the share is greater than the like. Check it out. Send me your questions. But if you're hooked on the like, we have another option for you. It's called likeapalooza.com. Again, it goes to a blog post of ours talking about how companies should not be encouraging likes for themselves in the name of charity. They should be encouraging likes for the charity in the name of themselves. Kind of flipping what you see a lot on, on its edge. Time? Five minutes? Ten. Yeah. Ten, really? You turned back time, didn't you, Cher? <laughs> All right. On your Facebook page, and you're about, if I go to your Facebook page, that little about box underneath your cover image, well, the first thing I see be your website address, which is a hot link. Anybody? Me? Am I the only one? Uh, one and a half here. The first thing in your about box should be your website address. Two and a half. Is your cover, cover photo cool? Is it relevant? Does it tell a story? Does it make it that it's a first impression? That's your front door to your Facebook page when somebody goes to your page to like you. Does your cover photo have a description to meet the guidelines that Facebook has uh, tightened, then loosened, and then are slowly tightening back up again regarding uh, what can and cannot be in a cover image? What is your profile photo? Is it a logo? Mine's a logo. I don't like it. Do people engage with a logo? People engage with a face. Can you take a picture, Mark, of one of your drivers in a Mid America shirt or a Mid America bus? Can you make it your actual product to be your face? I know it is. I look. <laughs> Can you make it something that's the semblance of your business that has your brand name on it? Even if it's you holding your business card, here's your smiling, happy face, and here's my business information. People wanted to see this happy, smiley faces behind the curtain. Are you getting that 12% uh, that, uh, of your audience to engage with you? Monitor those insights. Always look and see. Facebook makes it very, very easy. Now they put a new feed at the top of your Facebook page when you're logged in. It shows your last five or six posts, and it shows how many people uh, the percentages of people that interacted with it, whether it was paid search or whatever. It's all right there in front of you for, you, for the taking. Do you lead your industry? Are you the leading winery in the Herman Wine Trail? All right, I like that attitude. Are you the leading stone? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> the other Herman Winery, sorry, Alyssa. Are you leading your segment in your community, in whatever it is that you're selling and offering. Is the Capitol Plaza the biggest Facebook audience in Jefferson City when it comes to hotels? I think it is, I don't know. 
the deal is here is that you need to plant your flag on Facebook. It doesn't matter if there's 16 hotels in Jefferson City on Facebook. If you're the one that's active, if you're the one that's engaging folks, if you're the one that's people are saying, hey, I just checked in, and I just checked in, ha ha, at the Capitol Plaza, they own the hotel business on Facebook in Jefferson City, where a majority of Missourians are on Facebook. And the majority of those Missourians are spending up somewhere between 30 and 40 minutes a day on Facebook. So the more you can engage that audience, the more you can plant that flag and own face, that Facebook territory for your business, the better off you're going to be. Graph search. Who's got graph search? You, Laura's got it? You, well, of course you got it. I don't have it yet. It's weird. It's slowly being rolled out across the platform. Graph search, if you haven't heard, is going to be where you now have that little sucky magnifying glass bar at the top that says, I just need to find, I need to find Liz Watson. And it brings up every Liz Watson in Albuquerque, New Mexico, not the one I went to high school with. Uh, okay. Graph search is going to expand that out. And if you don't have a strong presence currently, you better get started because you're going to be left behind in the dust on graph search. It's driven by customer likes. It's impacted by comments and shares. Your search page's data, which has been entered, all of that information on that about page, your information, all the stuff that was read about me there was off my about page, which reminds me I need to update that. Everything that you're putting out there on Facebook is going to be searchable. And all the people that are interacting with you as a community, a hotel, a business, are going to be searchable. So if it says, which wine should I enjoy in Herman, Missouri? I'll be able to put wine, Herman, Missouri, friends, and it'll show me all my friends who did interact with a winery in Herman, Missouri, and their comments, and their impressions. And then I'll be able to message Liz Watson and go, hey, which one? Oh, Glenner Stone Hill. Or I'll be able to read her comments right there. And people will form opinions based on their friends. Like I said here, if Google, Bing, and Yelp had a baby, this is what graph search is going to be. Thank you. Thank you for that one. Sponsored stories. Every post that you make, but not every post that you make, can be, a, should be, a sponsored story. You see the little, in the right-hand box, when you're writing your post, there's a little drop-down box that says sponsored. If you want to reach more of your audience, if you want to reach more than that 12%, you click that, and for, it's based on the amount of fans that you have. For instance, we run the Master Your Card Missouri uh, Facebook campaign. Uh, which has somewhere around 9,000 fans, give or take, it would cost me $50 to reach all the people who like my page. And that, you know, that post would run an ad either until I stopped it or until I used up $50 worth of views. So if you want to make sure that all your audience is seeing your most important posts, not your weather updates, not your special of the day, because you don't want today's special to be still running in the cycle tomorrow or next week. If you have a post that somebody really, really engaged with, go back and kick that thing up on a sponsorship so more people will see it. The paths to success on Facebook, I spend so much time talking about Facebook because that's where the people are, that's where the audience is in Missouri. If you're trying to reach Missourians, it's not anywhere else to the numbers that it is on Facebook. Measure, test, automate what you can, but never use a third party platform to make Facebook posts for you. Facebook has scheduling functions built within it. And if you do it from a third party platform, you will get punished in the algorithm and your reach will not be as deep as if you made an organic post on Facebook. Build your content calendar. We talked about that. We talked about that in the first presentation. Know what you're going to say before you say it. You can even schedule your post out months in advance, years in advance. I think it goes up to 2016. That's very optimistic. Keep your ears on, keep those quirky ears up in the air. Use your photos, and if you can ever capture a testimonial about anything, your community, your wine, your buffs, get that thing up there and everybody can, so everybody can see it. That, that is gold. That is gold. If somebody had a great experience and they're willing to sit down in front of your camera on a phone or a rig or whatever you've got, and you can capture that, blast it out to the world. That's an endorsement. Again, the two most powerful words in social media are thank you. 
This presentation in its full depth, there's another 50 slides to it, will be available on our website later today. I encourage you to come out and, and check it out. Our video will be up sometime next week after we get it rendered and graphicked out and put the car chase scene in. <laughs> but uh, the two most powerful words right now are thank you for the time. Uh, I'm going to be here all day on the panel uh, later this afternoon. And uh, thanks for doing what you do to promote Missouri. I really appreciate it.